uh, at work. You're at work. Okay. And where, like, don't tell me the hospital, but what, like, you're in New York, aren't you? Uh, north of New York City, like, right okay. outside of it. Okay, cool. And how are you, are you seeing a lot of cases with corona right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. ICUs are all full and the floors are starting to fill up. New York City is getting hit a little bit worse this week, so I think okay. their answers will be considerably worse. Yeah, yeah. And what it, have how much has it been like in the progression of like everything that's been happening? How has this week and last week compared to the last couple months? So the area I am in was much worse like four weeks ago, mm -hmm. but it's leveling out in the last week, but we anticipate another big surge coming in in the next 10 days. How come? Sorry? How, how come? Why is that? Uh, because uh, full restrictions have really haven't been followed. And mm -hmm. we think people have been moving around a little bit and spreading it. And it usually takes about like 10 to 14 days for people to like get sick enough where they will go to the ER. Okay. And that's going to happen right around like next week for us. What was surprising for you with this whole thing? Was anything like like shocking because I, I know there's a lot of thinking misinformation out there about like what this actually is because I remember when this was first like you know when we first started to see it it was a lot of like oh it's just kind of like a bad flu or young people can't get it really bad and, that, one, you know. that one that last okay. one mm -hmm. well young people do fine I think their like death rate is pretty low but mm -hmm. they do get quite sick they do get in the hospital, they do end up in the ICU, they do end up on the ventilator. Um, but young people that also have high viral load exposure, like healthcare professionals, or like a, a principal died in Brooklyn who was 36, and I think you know she was probably around lots of kids and lots of people. So when you're exposed repeatedly, and I think as a young person you socialize more, so mm -hmm. you, you're just around more people that might be infected. So that may be why young people have worse outcomes or are getting sick. Mm -hmm. And what about like the asymptomatic people? Like when people say, oh, it, some people are asymptomatic and they have it. What does that mean? That means you have it, are not feeling bad at all, think you feel great and are walking around infecting everyone around you. Mm -hmm. And does it eventually hit you or can some people just be carriers of it and just continually like not have any symptoms the whole Both. time? Okay. Both. Um, so a lot of people that don't have like classic symptoms, uh, one symptom they have um, talked about a lot is uh, loss of uh, smell and taste. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what are some like milder symptoms that people might be thinking, oh, this is just allergies or I'm just tired or something? Like what would... okay. uh, Some people have a post nasal drip when they wake up in the morning and the back of the throat is a bit sore sore throat, like a little bit of a cough. Like every time I cough now, I panic. Like, <laughs> wow. wow. And are you, how are you guys protecting yourselves? Cause now we're saying that there's so many um, things about not having enough PPE and not, you know, everyone is, we're going to be running out of equipment for the healthcare providers. What are you, are you guys yeah. seeing that in I think that'll happen. It's happening in some places, especially like mm -hmm. city hospitals and places that are not well funded. Mm -hmm. um, my department is really good. They've been taking care of us. They've been advanced stocking up. So we're we're doing much better, I think, compared to the average. But even that, I think, will drop off as the real because, you know, the most people are expecting the peak in New York City to be in two weeks and it's mm -hmm. already really bad. So I think in the next two weeks, supplies will really dwindle. Mm -hmm. I bought myself like to like full on like gas mask basically just in case because like if supplies run out I want to protect myself yeah yeah and what how does it feel going to work every day like how are you scared are you stressed like what's going on in your world as you're walking into the hospital every day um, I'm pretty scared when I walk in but then I just tell myself to not think about it and then it you know because if you think about it and you just realize that you're in a building full of people that have this and that like, you know, it's, it can survive up to like three days. And then you realize the entire building probably is covered in it. The elevator is probably covered in it. Everything is covered in it. So like, what's the point of even wearing gloves or masks? But then, you know, you can just like wallow in a hole of anxiety, which is not productive as well. So I just like not, 
you know, wear my mask, wash my hands, and that's really all I can do. Mm -hmm. And then when you go home, are you around people or like, are you around your family? How do you keep other no, people? Uh, I live alone. Okay. Um, but even then I've cut off physical contact with my family because I don't want to get my mom or dad sick. They're older. Mm -hmm. They're high risk for uh, you know a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom, like, don't expect to see me maybe till summer. Wow. And and I, so how, with your... Do you, how long do you think, like, I know that obviously it's really hard to predict with this, but how long do you think based on what you're saying, how long do you think this is going to be happening to this extent? Like, cause I know you so, guys, are the middle yeah, East that's a really, yeah, go ahead. That's a tough question. You know, there's a lot of variables at play. I think the ultimate thing we're waiting on is a vaccine or antiviral treatment. Mm -hmm. Whenever that comes, that'll be like the real drop. In between, I think we're going to have like little waves, but then this new data came out like in the last 48 hours where they did a study of the cruise ship in Japan mm -hmm. that was like anchored off for like a month while they tested everyone. And it's mm -hmm. a really good uh, experiment because basically a cruise ship is like, it's like a closed system. No one leaves and no one goes uh, out or in. And what they found, which was really interesting, you know, I'll just cut through all the numbers, but there's a strong suggestion that a lot of people that were asymptomatic developed immunity really fast Oh wow! on the cruise ship, which is good because what that means is if you were to open up the cruise ship and let like more people in with infections, they wouldn't reinfect everyone in the cruise ship. They'd only oh. infect a few people. The rest of the people would be immune. If that holds for society writ large, I think, you know, I'm really hoping that holds true. But what that'll mean is the second and third waves won't be that bad. And what do you mean by like, What's, can you talk a little bit about like second and third wave, like for people that don't understand what that means? Like, what is the whole idea around it? So basically, you know, they're locking everyone down in Tel Aviv. So no, no one will get the disease. But then the disease doesn't go away. It's still like in some people, in some pockets, you, you don't really know. And in the moment they let you back on the subway again, the few people that are still carrying will infect other people. But those people were never infected in the first place because they were home, so they never developed immunity. So those people will get sick again, and then there'll be a massive spike in cases, and then the authorities in Tel Aviv will have to shut everyone down again, and then everyone will go back home and try to like preserve it for the health system. And then a few weeks later, we'll come back out only to repeat the cycle. And the problem with that is that you have repeated waves of infection because no one's developing immunity. Okay. And okay. I think in like rich societies like America, Israel, Northern Europe, they, the authorities can afford to pay people and help them, you know, survive the economic damage of like going home over and over again. But in other countries, you're not going to have that. Right. And with, yeah, go on. So I think that's like going to be a huge test for the next like two months worldwide is what do you do with these people? Yeah. So I think they they might just let it go and let people develop immunity and like pay the price. I think that's an approach that some countries will take. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. And with you guys, like, I know it's interesting because with us, we're a small country, everyone is following the regulations and the rules and everything. And I know with the States, every state is kind of taking a different approach to it. And every, you know, everyone is at different levels. Like when I look at, you know, my family in the, in the Southwest, they're at, kind of at the stage where we were like three weeks ago. And even then people aren't really taking it seriously. And so I know every state is like different. How are you feeling that, um, like, I guess, what's your opinion on that? What do you feel like the restrictions are versus like what people are listening to, what needs to be happening, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think that's a major problem. I think it's you know gonna reflect pretty poorly on the American political system, especially compared mm -hmm. to something pretty unified like China. Because mm -hmm. if you shut down New York and then everyone in Florida is still partying on the beach at spring break, <laughs> then it really doesn't matter if you shut down New York because it'll come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, I think that's going to be an evolving challenge. But I guess the good news is that if it hits New York first, we will be the first to develop immunity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hopefully it doesn't come back. But if the virus mutates, which it has a high chance of doing, then maybe all bets are off. So there's lots of variables and you know, people really have to just pay attention. But, you know, there's politics involved. Different groups have different agendas as far as, like, activity and economics versus public health and how much you want to spend. So it becomes kind of a complex issue. It's, yeah, definitely. You know, <laughs> tough. Yeah. 
And what, when you guys, I think there's probably so much panic there now. Is Are people coming in with, you know, milder symptoms? And are you able to look at those people versus the people that are in really, really critical condition? Like where, where are you guys triaging things, you know? Because... I'm not in the ER, so I can't answer that. All, all, but I yeah. do know is that they, had, they literally have a giant room, like the entire okay. center, just for if they think you have COVID. So I think anyone who has like a cough and a fever just goes there. Whether you have the flu or seasonal allergies or something, you just go to this room. Okay. okay. Um, and I, I know they're setting up massive centers just to send overflow, like the Jacob Javits Center in New York City. They're just going to send everyone in New York who doesn't have COVID to the center to free up beds in the other hospitals for COVID. Okay. Um, how are you, and again, this is just an opinion question, but because of everything that's happening, not only because of the panic, but also social isolation and just a change from people's normal routines to completely a different world that we live in now. How are you thinking that this is going to play out with like mental health and um, that kind of area that people might be suffering from either, you know, complete panic or suicidal ideation or just loneliness, you know, like what, sure. where do you think this is going to come into play? I think that's a pretty silent epidemic that no one's paying attention to. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be able to leave their apartment to get their psych meds. I think loneliness and anxiety and depression are going to be like massive. Like not many people that live alone are going to be okay with this for weeks on end. Um, you know, on top of that, there's substance abuse issues. Like that's actually why all states, you know, in every news conference, whenever they say stuff is shut down, they always say the liquor stores are open because if the stores are closed, all the alcoholics are going to go into withdrawal and like a lot of them will die from that. So you, you actually can't shut down the liquor stores. Um, so all that stuff, I think, will start really showing up in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people, I don't think, will take it seriously because everyone is afraid of, like, the plague that's going around. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how seriously that gets taken. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other myths that you're hearing around this that you're um, hoping that people will just stop spreading or things that you're seeing that are you'd like to tell people that, you know, pay attention to? Um, I would definitely say like social distancing does not mean you go out to a park and sit six feet away from each other. It means you don't go out of the apartment. Mm -hmm. And that if you are at a store picking up food or drugs, then you stay six feet away. But you don't like have a party and pretend yeah. to stay six feet away because that's just that defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. I've, seen, mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen picnics of people where they are sitting like three feet away and they're like, oh, this is like six feet. And I'm like, yeah. no, <laughs> this is not, yeah. like, this doesn't count. Yeah. And then the other thing is to like avoid hoarding the, any of these drugs that are hitting the news. Mm -hmm. I think some politicians have been like touting them as cures for whatever reasons, and none of them are proven. The trials are like the data is pretty weak, and all these drugs have side effects. A lot of them cause heart arrhythmias, and there's been reports of people taking them to prevent getting corona and dying of heart problems. Oh my God, and, I know. I thought something about like a fish tank additive or something yeah that... yeah there's so much stuff out there and, and there's yeah. one medication which a lot of people with autoimmune diseases like uh arthritis or lupus use called plaquenil and it's been getting hoarded in the last like week and now people with lupus don't have meds for their treatment because other people are hoarding hoping to use it so you know this is like toilet paper but on another level because like, wow, yeah. like cause actual harm to yourself if you take these drugs without a doctor's you know prescription mm -hmm. and you're gonna cut off other people that have been using this drug mm -hmm. as well. So it's that we're starting to see a lot of that and pharmacies are starting to cut down, but you know, that that's, I think the new thing that's starting this week that we're really starting to get worried about. Mm -hmm. And what are some things that people can do to help you guys who are on the front lines, like healthcare providers? Um, what is, what is something that any of us can do to help? Stay home. Don't hoard. <laughs> I think hoarding is like the ultimate problem because you know everyone's going through a tough time and then like people that need food aren't getting their food people that need TP aren't getting TP people that need meds aren't getting meds and that's going to cause like social problems and then like long term that'll get in the way of like distributing other stuff so I think just like being orderly and staying home and you know we have enough stuff in most you know in 
in countries like mine and yours to go around and it'll go around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Is there anything else you want to share? Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, the data says you likely will not die and you likely will not get it. Mm -hmm. and you just have to keep that in mind. Like the mm -hmm. odds of you getting it and getting sick are, those are the hard odds. And if you do get sick, we live in two countries which have good treatment. So mm -hmm. we, we can have faith in that. It's better than being someplace else. So there's lots of things to look for that are positive. You know, a lot of scary stuff out there, which is true, but there's, there's reasons not to lose hope. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really, really sure. appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you guys stay healthy over there, okay? <laughs>